Hello, and thank you for joining me today for my talk on the R package validation in Val Tools. My name is Ellis Hughes, and I'm a statistical programmer. I'm heavily involved in the R community. I run the Seattle Use R group. I have been involved in the Cascadia R Conf and R Pharma conferences. And I also run the screencast called TidyX, where I go through and explain how R code works with my co host, Patrick Ward. You should definitely check that out. All right, so today I'm talking about the R package validation framework, which is a project I've been working on for about a year and a half or so to incorporate validation into your software development lifecycle. First, you start with your requirements, which is where you define your uh, goals and uh, what you'd like to accomplish with your R package, and as well as your risks. Then you go through and do your standard R package development process. After you've done that, you write your test cases, which show how your package meets your requirements. Then you write your test code, which is the implementation of your test cases. And then finally, you generate a validation report, which is executing your uh, test code as well as compiling all your requirements and test cases together to provide documentation that your package does what it says it does. So the ValTools R package is, imp helps you implement this framework into your R packages seamlessly and in an automated fashion. Currently, it's on version 0.3.0. It's available on GitHub at github.com slash fuseorg slash ValTools. And really, it's providing tooling to extend, use this in dev tools, but around validation. So it makes this process simple so you don't have to think about where things go. You just have to do it and run it. And it really turns validation into push button get validated. All right, so ValTools relies on uh, infrastructure to work and run. So if you're adding validation into your R package, you use ValTools VTUs validation. But if you're going to be starting a package, um, that you know you'd like to be validating, you can use the ValTools VT create package, which is simply a wrapper around the use this create package, but then adds a validation infrastructure as part of the creation. Now that you have the infra infrastructure in place, you can add all the validation elements that need to exist, the requirements, test cases, and test code. And you can use this doing the VT use rec, VT use test case, and VT use test code functions. Each one of these will create the file in the correct location in the validation infrastructure. It'll ask for your user information if you've never created a, uh, an element before. And so it'll ask for your, your name, your role, and your title. Then it'll open it for editing. Um, because it asks for that information, it's able to pre-populate your oxygen tags, which is what ValTools relies on to uh, scrape when it's generating the validation report. And think of these as analogs to the use this, use R, and use this, use test functions, where they simplify this process and help you perform and focus on what matters, which is writing your code and tests. Okay, we also have these custom oxygen tags, which I referenced earlier. And each one of these does a different thing that ValTools relies on. So at editor and at edit date helps record who did what and or who did it and when they did it. The at risk assessment records the risk um, risk assessments for each of the requirements. The coverage helps the uh, ValTools know which uh, test cases map to which requirements. And then at deprecate tells ValTools if any of the elements or functions are deprecated. And so if I were to be adding these into my uh, package, I would simply add them in with any other Roxygen tags. They behave exactly like your Roxygen tags, and this will actually augment your documentation with the editor and edit date into your man pages. And so that's really nice. So this is a uh, editor LSU, so myself on uh, March 3rd, 2021, uh, March 12th for the hello world function. Now you need to go through and generate your report and you can use the VT use report. It behaves exactly like a vignette actually. So it'll create the report file, but we've come up with a template to populate with what we think most people will be needing. Uh, ValTools also comes with a series of helper functions that you can use to edit your report. Uh, it's our markdown, so it's completely editable, editable and you can add any elements that you think are necessary for your organization. So now that you have all the elements in the validation report to prove validation, there's a couple of different ways we see you running it. So VT validate report simply executes the report. VT validate source will temporarily install your source code as a library and execute the validation report. VT validate build will also temporarily install it and then generate a tarball after executing the validation report and proving that it succeeds. VT validate install will temporarily install prove that the validation report is able to be generated and then fully install the package onto your system. And finally, there's VT validate installed package, which is if you've installed this package using the prior paradigms, but the environment has changed, 
you can run this to simply re-execute the validation report to prove that the behavior has not changed. And all of these will save the output report to an output directory and then open it for your viewing. So hopefully after this talk, you now understand that validation and R can truly live together forever. Thank you for watching today. You can find the Val Tools R package at github.com slash fuseorg slash valtools and to in these slides at github.com slash the bioengineer slash validation user 2021. Thank you.